Yo, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Now, you guys, shit, you guys been in the comments lately. I've seen at least about 40, 50 Jennifer Crumbly messages. So, guess what? We're fucking with Miss Jennifer Crumbly. Now, if you guys don't remember, um, it was about a year ago. There was like, you know, typical American shit, school shit, right? There's this kid who shoots up the school but the element that's different to this is that the parents kind of got roped in with it also because of neglect so we're gonna go ahead and check out miss jennifer crumbly how much you know how how much did they know that their child was a psycho you know what i mean let's go ahead and check this out Oh, absolutely. I wish he would have killed us instead. Extra marriage. I mean, fuck. <laughs> I'm not going to keep pausing because I know y'all be getting mad. But I mean, the first thing she says, the very first thing is that, oh, yeah, you know, I wish he had just killed us instead of everybody else. Man, that's a load of bullshit. Please. I mean, we're already starting off bad. But anyways, let's, let's actually get into this shit. Detective Timothy Willis with the Oakland County Sheriff's Office testified about all of these notes found in the shooter's journals. In reading the journal, were there passages in there indicative of a request for mental health help? Yes. Can you read what's been identified here as page six of that journal? Yes, the shooter writes, I have zero help, as you can see on hold, for my mental problems, and it's causing me to sh in school. Damn. We'll move on to page five. Could you read this passage, please? In this one, the shooter writes, I want help, but my parents don't listen to me, and I can't get any help. Well, this is page 19. Can you read that? Yes. Shooter writes, my parents won't listen to me about help or therapist. Okay, all right. One thing I will say is, though, you know, kids grow up in different households and shit, and, you know... I feel like certain kids are in touch with different emotions. We're just going to say it like that or uh, compared to other kids. Now, all I'm going to say is like this. Oh, I need help. Oh, I'm depressed. Oh, I'm, I'm just so helpless. Like that's like a I feel like that's a common theme amongst kids who do shit like this. Now, I'm not saying they don't need help and that they don't like, you know, that they don't need some guidance because clearly they do. But the fact that you are conscious enough to say that, oh, I need help, uh, there's a problem with me, I'm seeking help, I need a therapist. I feel like that's just a coping mechanism to kind of just justify why you want to the school up. You know what I mean? Instead of just saying straight out, I just want to the school up because I'm fucked up. They, they kind of like, they blame mental health. That's like the number one thing in this day and age is, oh, but my mental health was so bad. That just caused me to light everybody up it killed johnny lisa everybody in my class no nah, bro i call bullshit on that in that journal were there entries about the shooter's desire to obtain a nine millimeter handgun yes this is also exhibit 401 page 22 could you read those quotes please yes the shooter writes i want to shoot up the school so badly soon i'm going to buy a nine millimeter pistol so were the there any passages regarding the shooter's plan for the actual shooting? Yes, there were. Okay. Here's page three, also exhibit 401. Could you read that, please? Yes. Shooter writes, I'm about to shoot up the school and spend the rest of my life in prison. Were there any journal entries about the shooter's access to the 9mm handgun? There were. This is also exhibit 401, also page three. Could you read that, please? Yes, sir. The shooter writes, first off, I got my gun. It's a SP-2022 Sig Sauer 9mm. Second, the shooting is tomorrow. I have access to the gun and the ammo. I am fully committed this to this now. So yeah, I'm going to prison for life, and many people have about one day left to live. Damn, bro is a cold motherfucker right there. He was like, yep. And a lot of people only have one day to live. That's crazy. The fact that, I don't know, the fact that he's been writing this shit down, it seems like for weeks, 
kind of does seem like you know because like kids do shit to get your parents attention right so maybe he was hoping oh maybe they'll find my maybe they'll find my my notebook my my little psycho notebook and they'll try to ground me or something i don't know but i feel like you can't really fully blame the parents like you could be a shitty parent but that doesn't mean you know you caused your kids to go shoot the school up so i don't know We'll see what the we'll see what the jury thinks at the end of this entire trial. Have any evidence to believe that Mr. Crumbly or Mrs. Crumbly saw the journal? No, I just if, if I had evidence of that, they would. I imagine the charges would be different. If you had evidence they saw the journal, the charges would be different. Yeah, murder. Okay. I would imagine. Okay, so the journal was located in the backpack that belonged to the shooter, correct? Yes, correct. There were also a number of other papers in that backpack that you described. Yes. You don't have any evidence that Mrs. Crumbly ever saw any of those papers, correct? <clears throat> correct. So it seems that the teen was really struggling and wasn't getting the support that he needed from his parents. But the defense is trying to reframe things. They're saying, no, the Crumblies were the ones who were truly in dark about what was going on until after the shooting. That's when they found out. All right, so we have those little snippets of information, right? Basically, he's writing all these letters to himself. I guess, I mean, it's a journal, right? He's writing the journal. Clearly, I mean, no kid is just going to randomly do that. Like, oh, I'm going to do it today. It ends all now. It's like he wanted somebody to find that. But anyways, we're going to move forward straight into the cross-examination of his actual mom. And I think this is where she's going to say, oh, I hope he killed us instead of the whole school. So let's, let's check this out. Hi. Hi. Sir, I see your name. It's Jennifer Crumbly. And Mrs. Crumbly, um, you and I have been working together since November, or I'm sorry, December of 2021, correct? Correct. And is it fair to say that over these last 26 months, We've discussed whether or not you intended to testify a number of times. We have. Do you, um, do you want to testify in your case? Yes. Do you understand that if you did not testify, this judge, this court, would give the jury instructions that it cannot be held against you? Yes. Do you understand that after I question you, the prosecution is going to be able to cross-examine you? Yes. And do you understand they're going to be able to cross-examine you about all of the evidence that's been admitted in the case, including all of your text messages to, or your Facebook messages to your husband, all of those messages with Mr. Maloche, all the evidence in the case, correct? Yes, I do. They get full reign on cross-examination. We've gone over that, is that correct? Correct. And do you have any questions for myself or for Judge You can tell she's nervous as hell. She's over here twitching twitching <laughs> she's over here twitching and moving and swinging shit in my opinion she going to jail like you there's she's going to jail for something she might not get the i think they're going for attempted murder she might not get that but she's going to jail for something that's for sure because they need to make an example out of somebody like you know all these kids are going and shooting up schools they finally have some parents that they could hold accountable they're go they're gonna make an example uh, no, I don't. Is it your, are you doing this because anyone has threatened you or coerced you into testifying? No. Is this your choice? Yes. Is it voluntary, free, um, freely made by you? Yes. Um, is there anything you think the court should know about, about this decision? Uh, no. Does, do you have any questions for me, Mrs. Crumbly? I do not. So Crumbly started out by talking about her life. She worked in marketing for a real estate firm. She and James had been together for 18 years. They had this one son who she felt she was close to. This is all a way to reframe the narrative of a neglective mother, that this is all a way to humanize herself and her relationship with her son, show that this wasn't a dysfunctional family, but a normal, positive experience. And she also explained her personality, like the time she seemed to be cold as to what was happening, or you know, maybe she was talking so much about herself or focusing so much on herself. She explained that she's goes into this kind of analytical planning mode when something bad happens. So here's a sample of her giving some background. How often would you and James talk about or talk to Ethan? Well, talk to him every day. Um, talk about him. 
probably every day too. What kind of, did Ethan have scheduling things you had to work out? Yeah, he um, he, he had bowling practices throughout the week, bowling matches, and he worked part-time at a diner. So we had, to, we had to work out transportation and scheduling with that. You know what's crazy? She said they were together for 18 years, her and her husband, and she was still cheating on him. So, you know what I mean? Shit, y'all be careful out there. Y'all 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 be safe out there. You, you might think that your woman never cheated on you. <laughs> You know, you might think that women are better at cheating than men. I'll tell you that much. They're so much better. We, everybody's like, oh, yeah, men are dogs, this and that. Man, we do stupid shit and we get caught super easy. It ain't that difficult. Women, on the other hand, they could be holding an 18-year relationship fucking on Tyrone the whole time. You didn't even fucking know that. I'm telling you, y'all be careful out there. Stay safe. Um. In terms of your relationship with your son, how did you think your relationship was? I thought we were pretty close. Um, we would talk. We would, I mean, we did a lot of things together. Um, I trusted him, and I felt like I had an open door, and he can come to me about anything. I mean, I felt, I felt as a family, we were, we were the three of us were really close. Okay, you're getting Bullshit. a lot of... Here. Is that normal? Um, yes, because I'm talking in front of people and my nerves act up. So I get splotchy and I might break out in hives and I apologize. Okay, but you are okay. Yeah, I'm fine. Okay. Um, so with regard to, to your son, did you ever go through his text messages, go through his bedroom? Um, what kind of a parent were you in terms of going through those things? I did not go through his text messages. Um, I didn't have a reason to. His bedroom, I would go through when I clean it. I come across things, I look through it to see if it was something I needed to keep or throw away. Um, but I never went through his text messages. So she was there for him, checking on his grades, tracked his location using an app. She knew what was going on with him. Then again, he opened fire on a school. So how well did she really know him? Hey, Y'all in the comments, let me know. Do do you guys check your 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 people's phones, your children's phones and shit? That's a little excessive, man. I don't think. She, if I have a daughter, check it out. I'm going to be sexist. If I have a daughter, her phone's getting checked. But if it's my son, shit, I ain't checking that shit. Like, at a certain point. Hey, so quick sidebar. Oh, shit, let me pause this. At a certain point, you got to let them be like, yo, if you fuck something up, bro, you know, you got to deal with that shit. You know what I mean? But I feel like, you know, you just got to be biased with the daughter. We're checking that phone. Shit. Maybe once you turn, like, 16. I think 16 is a good cutoff, you know, because everybody has phones now. When you turn 16, I'm going to be like, all right, do your thing. I ain't, I ain't really getting into your business like that. But y'all let me know what you guys think about the whole checking on the phone. A detective from the computer crimes unit testified about text messages between Crumbly and her son, where it sounded like maybe the teen was having hallucinations of some sort. That's an important point. Because if you knew your son had mental health issues and you ignored that and you bought him a gun, that shows you created a danger. You could have prevented the shooting from happening. You should have seen this coming. But Crumbly suggested she never believed her son had these severe mental health issues. And she outright denies him ever telling her that he had these problems and wanted to see a doctor or anything like that. She also explained that if anything, she always thought he was messing around, that he was sarcastic. For instance, listen to this idea about him thinking the house was haunted because she said that was just a long-running joke. <laughs> this is a text where the prosecution uh, admitted to show that your son texted you, okay, the house is now haunted. What time was that text at? Um, it says 6.03 p.m. Okay. I don't know if it says minus four. I don't know what that means. Okay. And then um, the next text, some weird just happens and now I'm scared. Next one, I got. <laughs> Damn, some... he cussed. He he texts his mom a swear word. Shit, I wish I could text my mom some weird shit just happened. The fuck? <laughs> I'm telling you, man. The way he's even texting his parents. I mean, we're adult. Like I'm an adult now, so it's like okay, I could probably tell my mom like, damn, some shit just happened. But per personally, I wouldn't do it anyway. But he's a he's a kid. Like he's fucking. How old is he? Like 16 or something. 
He's texting like that? Okay. I can already tell what they're raising, you know? It's exactly what... It was exactly that product. They're raising a fucking psycho. Videos and a picture of the demon is throwing bowls. I'm not joking. It's the kitchen. I'm just going to be an outsider for a while. I mean, I, I'm sure I saw them, but they just didn't stick out to me until this case. Why didn't they stick out to you? Because it wasn't, it wasn't anything that was anything serious. It was, um, Ethan just messing around. You gotta okay. explain to the jury, how did Ethan mess around? Um, so he's been convinced our house has been haunted since 2015. It was built in 1920. Um, around that time frame, him and his friend would go down to the basement and play a Ouija board. So... Oh, oh, and you just let him play with the, with the Ouija board, you know, because that's cool. You know, it's just them having fun. You know, just fucking around, bro. <laughs> Like, th th she's breaking her own case. Yeah, you know, they'll just go, they'll go down into the basement, play with the Ouija board. Uh, you know, just do some demonic shit, you know, bro. They thought we had a house ghost. Um, so it was around that time when he would mess with us that things were going on in the house. Uh, silverware was flying across the room. Um, doors were slamming. He actually took a video of the door and showed me when I got home, and you can clearly see where he's standing back with his phone, looking at the door that's open. You can see him walk up the door, and you can kind of see him slam it, and him trying to say, see our house is haunted. So it was that kind of stuff that he, he did. What is happening again is they are taking some of these bad facts and circumstances and providing a new context to them. That's what the defense is doing. Now, attorney Shannon Smith also asked Crumbly about the purchase of a gun or her son on Black Friday, just days before he would use that gun to kill fellow students at his high school. Well, previous witnesses have already confirmed that Jennifer Crumbly was not present when that gun was purchased. Yeah, I, um, I texted my husband and asked where you're at, and um, I believe he called me and told me that him and Ethan were at the Acme um, uh, firearm store looking at guns. Okay. And then they came You're just gonna him. get your weirdo like okay, let's say he's not a psycho, but he's clearly a weirdo. He I mean he's playing haunted games in the house and he's like he's older. He's not he's not a child, right? You're gonna say, Yeah, let's go buy him a gun. Like an actual gun, not a pellet gun, not a not a not a BB gun, a nerf gun. Let's just go buy him a gun. Because fuck it. America. <laughs> like, I don't understand these okay. parents. Okay, did they purchase a gun that day? They did. Okay, the prosecution Why? brought in exhibits showing the receipts, all that. You weren't with them when they bought the gun, correct? No, I was not. Okay. You did post on Facebook a photo of the gun. We saw the, the post, correct? Correct. And in the post that's been admitted already, you described it as your son's uh, Christmas gift. Because, um, yeah, that's that's what we do with weirdo kids. And we, we don't try to throw them in sports and, like, make them, you know, get them out their shell and shit. Nope. We we buy them guns because that's going to make them more social. Sure did. We made them more social, all right. How, what, what, what was, what does it mean? Um, They had rented a 9 millimeter at the shooting range before, so they knew it was the type of gun or the size Gun, I guess what it is that um, the caliber. they wanted to get. And my son and my husband did a lot of texting back and forth. My son did a lot of research on it, and they're comparing different ones that they wanted to buy. Um, that went, that went on for a couple months. Um, my husband just kind of kept blowing it off, like not you know not right now, not right now. And then I guess when I was out shopping, they said, "Well, let's go try on Black Friday, see if we can get one on sale, or if there's any deals going on." Okay, so they ultimately did get one, right? Um, so it's supposed to be some father-son shit. Okay. Well, I mean, he should have hid that thing properly. Like, yeah, no. This, somebody, somebody needs to go to jail. I agree, because, like, they're just out here buying no. this, this crazy-ass kid some guns for no reason. Like, Did you object? Did you say, I don't want that gun in the house? Anything like that? No, I was more angry that they cut into our Christmas tree time. Usually, cut my Christmas tree down right after I get back from shopping, but I had to wait for them. So I was, I was irritated at that. Crumbly testified the gun was kept locked away and that the firearm was her husband James's responsibility, a common theme of pointing the finger at him, not her. 
Did he have free access to that gun? No, it, it was for him to use at the shooting range only. Was he allowed to take it out? Not without my husband around. Did he know where it was kept? My husband hid it usually in our bedroom in different spots. Okay. What was the intention of hiding it? That's just what you're supposed to do. No, that's not okay. what shit. Man, for, for five months I left my gun out. The fuck you talking about? Hide it. The fuck? I only got this safe because I did a YouTube video on it. You know, I don't have no kids. You're supposed to hide it when you have a crazy ass kid in the house that might shoot up a school. That's when you need to start hiding shit. But if you have kids, I mean, just get a safe. He went and bought the gun, didn't even have a safe. What do you think is going to happen? And when it was hidden, did was it locked in any way? It had the, the cable lock on it. Okay. And you again testified about the key being in a beer stein? Correct. Would the beer stein be right by the cable lock? Or? No. Okay, so where would the beer stein be? It would probably be in one of the ones in the kitchen. And when Smith questioned her client about the seemingly damning evidence of premeditation that the school officials found, Crumbly said she simply didn't know about any of that. Okay, Exhibit 166. This is from September 8th, 2021. Um, it starts off with an email from Miss McConnell to <coughs> Sean Hopkins. It says, can you please touch base with Ethan Crumbly? In his autobiography poem, he said he feels terrible and that his family is a mistake. Unusual responses for sure. He writes back, thanks for the heads up. I'm yeah. in senior meetings throughout the day. I'll try to catch up with him. Were you aware this was ever a discussion or an issue? No. Were you aware that Mr. Hopkins ever talked to or tried to talk to your son? No. Did anyone ever call you to make you aware of any of this? No. If you heard this, um, how, would you, how would you react or what would your reaction be? Um... I'd be definitely concerned why he feels like his family's a mistake and he feels terrible. So that would be that would be a concern to me. Okay. So you this is something you were unaware of. Correct. And in fact, when did you find out these emails existed? Uh, when we started getting discovered. Okay, so in this case. Correct. Crumbly says that in the days leading up to the shoot Look at this kid. You know? Does that scream basketball athlete or cool kid or or even D-boy, you know, the little the guy who, who might be selling a little weed on campus? Nope. He doesn't scream none of those things. The, not even the nerd. He seems like one of them kids that that might, you know, in the back of your head, you're thinking like, man, Billy might just shoot this bitch up one of these days. Like that. That's who it's exactly how he looks like. You got to go with your stereotypes sometimes, people. Like, that shit is crazy. Look at the glasses. It's like, you, you. that's the look. That's it right there. Son seemed to maybe be a little distant, maybe a little sad, but nothing that raised any kind of red flags for her. Do these texts look familiar to you? They do. Okay, who are these between? These are between uh, me and his friend's mom. Okay. And you say, you start off with Ethan is, I'm sorry, the, my son is in bowling tonight. I just want to let you know, not sure if he needs a partner. Why are you texting that? Um, I don't know why he wasn't bowling tonight, top of my head, um, but I, but they have partners on certain nights of the week. And so him and his friend were always partners. So I was letting her know that he wasn't going to be there. Okay. And this is on one date, April 29th. Did you talk to her on other dates or is this like the only time you talked to her? We, we've talked back and forth quite a bit. Okay. Now on this date, you say he's been acting kind of depressed. I don't know what's going on. I'm not sure if there's something bothering him at school, but he doesn't really feel good. I can't get anything out of him. Um, she, friend's mom mentions he stayed home from school today too. The only time they're happy is when they're together. Um, Talking about grades, you went mentioned this is all new to me. I'm not used to my son being moody. He's usually pretty happy and we'll talk about anything. I do know he's been stressed about school and his grades. Um, we called the school, but she wasn't in social do it tomorrow. I think his grades have a lot to do with it. I just got to a point where he's got so far behind and we were out of town. He's having difficulties making it up. Where were you guys out of town? Uh, in Florida, my, my uh, mother-in-law had passed away, so we were gone for a couple of weeks in the middle of April taking care of funeral arrangements and everything. 
And at this time, when you describe your son as being moody or depressed, did you think it was anything that warranted getting medical attention? No, he was just being quieter. He's, he's a quiet kid. He was just being quieter than normal. Um, and I'd ask him if everything was okay. He'd say fine. But I could just tell he was a little sad. And I thought maybe um, him and his, I didn't see his friend in a, in a couple of weeks. So I don't know if maybe they got into a fight and they weren't talking. And then all of this led up to the day of the shooting, November 30th, 2021. Remember, both parents went to the school when a counselor raised concerns about a drawing of a gun. Mr. Hopkins testified that um, he sent you something. What did he send you? Um, he sent me a copy of a math worksheet that had the scribbled out drawings on it. Okay, and I want to ask you, the night... Man, you know, it's crazy in Belize. You could draw all types of shit. You could draw most... You could draw an elaborate AK-47 with scopes and lasers on it. And nobody's even gonna think nobody's even gonna think nothing because nobody's shooting those schools up, which is crazy. That now it's like you you draw a gun on your piece of paper, and your your parents get called to school. Like I I don't know what made I don't know what what caused that trend. It's a trend now to just blast your school, and it didn't used to be that way. But. Before that scribbles out drawing um, thing came to you. Um, did you have any interactions with your son? Yes, we did. What were those about? Um, I saw in power school that he had an E in geometry. The so we got an argument. What the hell is an E? Engaged? Every, what is, what is that? Wait, did, he, did she say a D or an E? Hold on. Did you have any interactions with your son? Yes, we did. What were those about? Um, I saw in power school that he had an E in geometry. She said he had an E. I don't know what the fuck that means, but okay. So we got an argument again about his grades. Um, we took his phone away and told him that he couldn't go to the shooting range until his grades, his grades were brought back up. Shit, he might have shot the whole family up for that shit. So he's already going to the shooting range. Like, he's already using this gun. So he, he, he walked into that school feeling like Call of Duty. He was like, shit, I got my reps in. I know how to acquire my target. I know how to look through my iron sights properly. Man, let's go. Nah, this shit. Man. You can't you you can't give kids like this guns, man. I don't know what, what they're thinking. Okay, so so you guys had this argument the night before. I we saw lots of messages where you thought everything was fine that Tuesday morning. Is that how you felt? Yeah. Okay. So when you got that when you got that math paper texted to you, do you recall saying anything to Ethan on the phone? On speaker? Yeah, I asked him why he did why why he did that. Okay. What were you thinking at that point? Um I was actually I was actually kind of angry because I thought he was he did that in like defiance of us yelling him about missing assignments and here he is drawing pictures on an empty assignment page in geometry. So you felt like it was specifically him sending you a message about the night before. Yeah. How did that meeting go? Um. It it was pretty it was pretty nonchalant. It was pretty brief. Um, he started to tell he he basically filled me in on what my son and him were talking about for the last hour and a half. Um, he said that my son told him that he was feeling sad over the death of a dog that we had, um, my mother-in-law lost his friend. Um, so we talked, we talked a little bit about that. We, con we confirmed it. Um, we decided, to, is, we agreed it was hard on him. Um, he told us that he didn't feel, um, my son was a risk and actually gave him the option. Um, if he wanted to stay at school or go home, my son wanted to stay at school. So we all discussed, we all discussed that. Um, did you feel like you were taking the position of, I am leaving him at school whether he can be here or not? No, absolutely not. Okay. Um, were you surprised or were you not surprised? Did you have any feelings about whether or not he could stay at school? Um, I didn't really, I, I thought the advice that they were giving us was the, a good advice. We, we talked about him being sad and then... Um, he said being around peers usually helps. So we all agreed to that. Um, my son gets very stressed out when he does virtual school. So we agreed that it might stress him out more to do his school remotely the rest of the day. Um, 
But there was never a time where I would refuse to take him home. I could easily, if he wanted to go, take him with me. I had no issues with that. So again, the school didn't make a big deal of it. Better for him to be around peers, deal with this later. If the school didn't think it necessary to take him out and they didn't force him to leave, should Jennifer Crumbly be held responsible? They didn't search his book bag after all when that was the book bag that had the gun. It's a fair question, right? Reversing the narrative that she didn't take him home purely because she had work obligations that it was more of a joint decision. Which, by the way, there was testimony to suggest that her boss would have let her focus on her son more, not work. Okay, so that helps the prosecution. But anyway, if the school knew that the shooter had had a gun at home, that would have changed things. That's according to them. That's according to the school officials. So that's a point that's going to be difficult for the defense to contend with, that they never told the school about the gun. Well, as we know, within just a few hours of his parents leaving, this 15-year-old, he started shooting, killing four people, injuring seven others. And Smith asked... Damn, the same exact day. Man, it, to think about the teacher who was like, yeah, you know, it's fine. Let well, him stay. Think about that teacher who was just like, damn. I know they must feel they must feel guilty for that shit because, see, me personally, I would have sent his ass home. You're drawing guns and shit in school. You look the way you look. Get the, nah, go home. And you need some counseling before you come back. Like, we're not doing none of that shit. Yeah, I don't know when this shit became a trend. It's a trend now, though. You know, if you have issues at school, you're failing or, you know, things aren't going well. Fuck it. Shoot it up. See what happens next. Figure it out. Scrumbly about how she had heard about the shooting and the slow realization that her son was the shooter. You sent a text to your son that says you can talk to us. Why did you send him that? Um, after I left the meeting, I knew that he was sad about things, and I just wanted to let him know that he can talk to us about anything. Um, just wanted to make sure I, I opened that door. Um, you know, just let him know that we're there for him. We love him. Okay, and he said he loved you. Do you recall that? I do. Okay, was that, was there anything unusual about that? Yeah, um, he's at that age where it was hard to get I love yous back out of him. Um, for me to open my text and just see him randomly saying I love you was abnormal for him. Okay, did you think anything at that point? Um... No, not not right at that point. I, I I think I said text back, I love you too, I don't remember. I believe I did. Yeah. Okay. And later in the thread, you say, um, don't do it. So when you hear there's an open shooter at the school, I want to know in your mind, what do you believe is happening? Well, my, my husband had called me when I was still at work, and he said there's there's an active shooter at Oxford High School, and I can't get a hold of Ethan. And that's when I opened my phone, and I saw the I love you text. And then I texted him, are you okay? Um, in the process of it, I was getting my stuff and running out the door. Like my Yeah, see, you already knew Ethan was shooting that shit up. I don't know. You guys put in the comments what you think. Do you think she deserves to go to jail? I mean, I just feel like she just didn't give a fuck about Ethan. And, you know, the the diary, the text messages, all that shit, you know, she missed it because she just, she was focusing on work. I know that I had to go to my son's school. Um, it was on 75 when I was trying to get to, get to the exit um, that my husband called me and he asked me where I hid the bullets and I told him and then he said the, the gun is missing. Um, so instantly, just I'm like, oh my gosh, he's he's got the gun. I didn't actually think he was at the school shooting it. I thought maybe he walked home, and got the gun, and was in the field by the school shoot. I just I didn't imagine my son actually going into a school and shooting. And then when we got more updates, I was like, oh my gosh, he's he's a school shooter. He's going to kill himself because in my mind, that's what school shooters have done. They've killed themselves after. So. I yelled in my talk to text, Ethan, don't do it, because I thought he was going to kill himself. Sure. Nah, Ethan was too pussy to kill himself. That would have been the G way to do it. You know what I mean? Fuck it. You know what I mean? Take them take em all out and, and, you know, finish it off. Ethan said, nah, I'm going to take that life in prison instead. That life in prison is sounding pretty decent. Yeah. <laughs> And at the end of her testimony on Thursday, Crumbly was emotional. Um, in some of the messages the prosecution admitted, you say that you failed as a parent. Do you feel, are you a failure 
failure as a parent? I don't think I'm a failure as a parent, but at that time, um, I guess I didn't see, I felt bad that Ethan was sad at those things, and I guess I just, I don't know, I just felt like I failed somewhere. I don't, I don't really know how no, to. No, listen to me. This is pretty much it, y'all, but when... When you um when your kid goes to a school and starts blasting at people, that's pretty much your indicator that you're a failure of a parent. You know, just in case you, in case you, she clearly seems to be, you know, in a crossroads of understanding what a failure of a parent looks like. She's the poster child of of a failure of a parent. She let her kids shoot up a high school. That's crazy. You know, only trailer trash and. I don't even know who else lets their kids do shit like that. Anyway, people, I love you guys, man. You guys are awesome. Shout out my Patreon members. For those of you who want to join up, the link is below. As usual, shout out my fucking YouTube members, YouTube subscribers. You guys are legit. I'm going to see you guys in the next one. Until then, stay inside. Stay safe. I love you guys. I'm out.